Joining me now from New York City is Zarab Amari, senior writer for Commentary Magazine. Zarab, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. One year ago at the UN, President Trump derided North Korean President Kim Jong-un as Little Rocket Man. And now, following their summit this June in Singapore, he describes him as, quote, terrific. What's the likelihood we'll see a face-to-face -face between President Trump and Iran's President Rouhani? Uh, I don't think it's as likely as um, as the as the North Korea situation. It's a different kind of scenario. Iranian leaders have all sorts of their own internal uh, allergies about sitting down with the United States, the great Satan, as it were. But um, who knows? I mean, this is a presidency that uh, is capable of doing some um, wild and unthinkable things from time to time. So we should always be open to surprises. My own, it, I think my sense of the smart money is that it's not going to happen. National Security Advisor John Bolton warned Iran's leaders about the consequences of crossing the U.S., saying there would be hell to pay. How much of an influence do you think Bolton is having on U.S. policy toward Iran? Well, this is a presidency uh, where there's, a, I think, a great importance placed on principles, and especially National Security Advisor, I think, John Bolton, um, does play an important role. His his themes are in line in many ways with President Trump's own instincts, his emphasis on U.S. sovereignty, his um, disdain for international institutions and what one would call transnationalism. They share that. Um, and I think they, they both take a tough line against, uh, uh, against the Iranian regime. We did hear the word sovereignty used quite a bit. Could this America first position on everything from foreign policy to trade disputes backfire as a political strategy long term? I think that it's a mixed bag. There are situations in which constantly saying America first, constantly, you know, attacking allied leaders, uh, as the president tends to do sometimes, does backfire. You know, uh, NATO, for example, is, a, is, an, is an area where um, it's an institution that has helped secure the U.S. It, they, they've backed us in various interventions in the past. Uh, the only time that NATO has actually invoked the Article 5 commitment to mutual defense was actually after 9-11. Europe is our most important trade partner. So in those areas, it's problematic. But there are other areas where I think it bears uh, fruit, uh, the, the, the president's attitude, and in fact represents a return to norm from where President Obama had taken American foreign policy way off from our norms. So for example, recognition of of Israel, uh, Jerusalem is Israel's capital. That's a very Trumpian thing to do in a way. But at the same time, it's something that Congress had called for. It's something that, as the president said, is just acknowledging the reality that Jerusalem will be Israel's capital. So in those areas, I actually welcome a Trumpian attitude. And I don't think it should be written off altogether as, oh, he's crazy and he's going to disturb world order. Sorab Amari, senior writer for Commentary Magazine, thank you for weighing in. Thanks, Lauren.